Well, if you watched the show last week, it's action packed. The rut is kicking. Iowa is without a doubt the most insane big buck state I've ever seen. There's big bucks under every freaking stump out there. It's ridiculous. It just makes you have goosebumps every time you sit and stand in Iowa because you know that the next world record and the next 180 inch deer or whatever could walk around the corner. If you missed last week, let me catch up to speed real quick. You just had a really good shooter buck skirt us on the other side of the field. We're seeing some giant deer. I'm shooting those. When that doe blew at me, I took the appropriate measures and killed her. We had a ton of rutting activity and I shot this doe and um, I went down there by myself and just drug her out real quiet so we wouldn't bust this place out for tomorrow. We're still on the quest to fill our coveted Iowa buck tag. We went three for three in the Midwest, baby. Look at the mass on that deer. Split brow. What a cool buck. So without further ado, here we go. It's the third morning. Here in Iowa, this is gonna be our last cool morning for a while. It was 30 something degrees this morning. The temperatures at midday have been all the way up to 60. Full moon, hot temperatures, not exactly ideal for deer hunting, but the rut's still going on. I mean, we yesterday we had a heck of a sit in the evening. I rattled up a buck to about 65 yards, um, a quarter and two is this morning so far we've had four does or a doe and three fawns come in and then a big, he was actually an eight point, I mean his big six point frame, like super cool, I would have shot him. But he came in and it seems like this morning, whichever direction the wind's blowing, which it's blowing about three different directions, that's the way the deer are coming from. So it's kind of a pain in the butt when it does that to you. But might be time to put the clothes back in the scent crusher. I've been just hanging mine up in the mud room. I hadn't sprayed them down or put them back in the scent crusher all week, so I need to recharge my clothes a little bit. The spot we got for the evening, though, it's a smoking spot. Who knows what could happen? We're in Iowa, so we just gotta stay positive and have a little fun. Maybe we'll shoot a buck. All right, it's the fourth evening here in Iowa. The ground we're hunting is right behind me. And it's just two big cut cornfields and a big cedar bowl dropping down into some cut beans. Saw a real big shooter tent in here. And uh, it's just a good place for rut activity. I mean, it's a bedding area that's right, right around some crops. There's a lot of does and uh, we saw at least two shooter bucks in here. Um, I'm excited about this little spot, man. It's, it's, there's tight quarters where you can get some close shots and then I got a lane that's about 60 yards. Got a little rutting activity going on, so. It's approaching three o'clock, so we better get going. These deer are gonna kill herself. So the day's going pretty well. We start seeing deer activity immediately. That's a good buck, nine pointer. Didn't see him yesterday. That's the third shooter we've seen in a cedar bowl. He chases her, he jumps the fence below us, like way down from us, gets out in the field. I'm grunting, I'm rattling, I'm throwing the kitchen sink at this sucker. And he is just not responding. He's, he's got love on his mind, and he's got a sweet looking doe in front of him. Why is he gonna come back to me? When they're locked on does like that, it makes it tough, man. We end up hearing this buck grunting and chasing doe, and I just know I'm about to get a shot. Here comes the doe. The only shot that I had at this deer is him running as fast as he possibly could at about 35, 40 yards. Then all of a sudden, another big buck is coming. We've had one of the best hunts I've ever had. That was really cool. 
all kind of rutting activity, grunting and chasing. And we had a, uh, a big buck coming here chasing a doe. And he just ran through my 40 yard shooting lane, nothing I could do about it. Then another one, I think that was the 10, maybe with a time broke off, maybe from the other night. And he comes up to a um, bleak call. And he was going to walk right up the shoot lane and he turned right at the cedar where I couldn't shoot him, hop the fence and walk through the bean field. <laughs> so I started thinking right then and there, man, maybe it would be nice to just bump down a couple hundred yards to where these deer are actually crossing the fence and maybe get a shot at one of them. The next morning was just not a good morning to hunt the cedar bowl. We didn't have the right wind and we decided to head back to the farm we started hunting where we'd seen some good bucks. We decided to hunt this thing because in the cedar bowl where we've been hunting, it's just a terrible end for that. We don't want to put the deer out of there. We're going to try to hunt that maybe at night tomorrow. We get up in the tree that morning and it didn't take long and look a here coming. Three deer, a little dink buck, a year and a half old, a doe, and an absolute Iowa slobber knocker. Well, they go just in front of us and they get in this obstructed area of cedars and they just sit there at 35 yards. The doe starts to step out and she takes a hard right face, goes down the lane, Big buck follows her, puts his butt to me. I never get a shot. Never had a clear shot at him. That's, I'd have had to shoot through that cedar bush. Well, spoiler alert, I never see this deer again. But Chad's son, Bo, little Bo Cephas, went out on the same farm and killed an absolute stud. Holy cow, Bo. You did it, didn't you, buddy? What did you kill there? <laughs> Look at that. 16. There's kickers. They're here, here, here. Right here. There's kickers everywhere. Man, I tell you what, Bo is spoiled for life living out there with Chad at Midwest Antler Company. That's the buck of a lifetime, man. I don't even think I've killed a buck that big. Well, another evening here in Iowa. Saw a giant buck this morning, couldn't get a shot at him. He was behind a cedar bush at 40 yards forever. And every uh, every stand we've got, the wind's bad for us, so Chad put us in this old septic tank that he cut holes in. And um, now nah, this is like the nicest blind I've ever been in. It's got bow windows in it, and we're right above the spot where we saw all those shooters the other night and all the chasing, and just across the stand from where I killed the doe. Keep our fingers crossed, man. Fool me once, fooled you twice, by myself. The sucker's gonna walk right under our stand. He's about to go right under our stand right now. He's not the biggest ball. There's another, there's seriously, there's another buck. Ooh, he's bigger than the last one. Walking right to our stand. That's five shooter bucks that's in counting one in the corner tonight. Six total bucks. All right, well, it's day six of our Iowa hunting trip. We saw a bunch of bucks in here last night. Guess what? They all walked right under this tree. And we were hunting across the way because the wind wasn't perfect for this tree stand. I almost wish we'd have had it taken a risk and just got in it. We've had some good luck. We've seen a booner. We've seen all kind of good shooter bucks. Man, 
Yeah, we just either can't get them to slow down chasing the doe or can't get them in range. We've had them 40 yards, 30 yards, just either obstructed or running 100 miles an hour. But that's, you know, that's bow hunting. So we'll sit here a little while longer, we're going to move the sex stand and then um, probably get down and regroup and figure out a plan for the scene. Put the clothes in the sink crusher and take a good shower and just risk it next time, I guess. Iowa, day six. As y'all very well know, I am part of the brotherhood of the bone collector. And not too far from where we're hunting, Nick is hunting out here at the same time we are, and he gets a shot at the biggest deer he's ever killed. Here he comes. Here we go, buddy. Here we go. is the biggest buck I've ever shot. Look at that buck. He is a monster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven on that side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on that side. A giant Iowa buck. What a monster. Holy smokes, he's a stud. That is a humongous deer and look at the mass on this buck just a toad on the last day we decided to make a last ditch effort make a move switch tree stands it's a gamble you could have deer definitely walk under your old tree stand that you've been waiting on them to do all week and get burned but hey at this point we're ready to try anything all right i'm gonna make this quick we're in iowa middle of the rut it's evening number six here at Midwest Handler Company. We're still in the Cedar Bowl where we've been seeing all these bucks, but we were right up here on the hill. We moved the stand, but we had to go back to the house. We put all our clothes in the scent crusher. We got showered down, tried to be as scent free as possible because we've moved really close to these deer. This is a smoking little spot. The only problem is you can hear in the background some farm equipment. The guy's bailing silage over there right now got here, Josh was up the tree, hanging the X stand, and I was standing down at the bottom with my bow on the ground, and a great big old buck ran out, staring me right in the face at 30 yards. That's that right there. That's why people have a love and hate relationship with deer hunting, especially bow hunting. But it could happen any minute. We're in Iowa during the rut and we're gonna keep a positive attitude. Hopefully that guy up there will want some more deer to us. We've been sitting in a tree stand for a while and I start to hear something in the brush. And I'm just like, yes, just be, be something. Be something good.
we're sitting dead downwind from this deer. It's blowing right up the sucker's nose and he is just frozen at about 40 yards. Get down before 190 comes out. I just tore up with bow hunting the Hoyt Carbon Defiance. Rocked his world, baby. <clears throat> yes, sir. It's about as good as it gets for a red arrow. When you see that red arrow sticking in the ground, it's just such a symbol. It's just an exciting, successful moment and now the rest is just, I mean, we're on a gravy train with biscuit wheels, baby. Look right there, boy. Man, he didn't go nowhere. He didn't go anywhere. Dude, he's a beast. Look at that eight pointer, Josh. I mean, he's a beast, son. Look at those heavy horns. Look at the mass on that deer. And look at that right there, how cool that is. Split brow. I mean, this, this thing right here is a hammer. Look at the mass that he carries all the way out. Look at the size of his bases. I can't even come close to touching around his bases right there. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you the two, two factors, and I know it sounds corny, but it, it is true. That the scent control that Josh and I did with the scent crusher and, and some of our other products, you know, from uh, Cloak and Dagger, um, it, it's just, it made the hunt. Cause these deer came in like dead downwind again, just like in Kansas. Um, and they got a little nervous, kind of looked at us, shook it off and gave us a shot, man. And that's just, uh, that's a stud of an eight point. Smoke in his rear end too. That couldn't be any more perfect right there, right behind the shoulder. All legal, baby. Get the camera on. Uh oh. <laughs> Not dark yet. It's it ain't dark me. yet. That's right. That's a good sign. That's right. I appreciate it. Three for three, baby. Three for three. Three for three. That's pretty three. good. And here's the thing. We're also three for three on filming Boone and Crockett deer. Yeah. We filmed multiple Boone and Crockett. And that 10-pointer is big. And somebody who's a little more patient and a little less bloodthirsty than I am can come here and probably kill a Boone and Crockett deer. <laughs> come on, Boone. Well, i tell you what. We've had a great time out here at Midwest Antler Company. There is nothing like being with the Johnston family and sharing in the last real thing that you can get out there and do. All you guys wearing skinny jeans, trying to be hipsters, growing your beard out for all the wrong reasons, come join us. Get out there and shoot something. And I thank the great state of Iowa for allowing us Virginia boys and girls and people from all across the country to draw a tag and come out to y'all's great state where the people are amazing and the deer hunting is awesome. And we'll see y'all next time. I can't wait to come back to Iowa. Hopefully I'll draw another tag soon. And we'll see y'all next week on Red Arrow.